all yours. Thank you. My name is Carolyn Yagel. I'm with Environmental Planning and Design. Appreciate the opportunity to be here this evening. Um, back in July, we had discussion with the borough regarding the status of being able to uh, present information to you all uh, with the course of uh, your events and all of the uh, tasks that were in front of the borough. We had the opportunity to come here this evening and um, would like to present you with an update on where we are and where we're headed. So from a perspective of the um, funding package that we've been evolving, uh, we have taken a look at what the different phasing opportunities for the package are. I believe there are a number of people here this evening that, uh, that are new to the discussions and you gave an overview uh, last a couple weeks ago, last week, uh, regarding sort of the main components of the plan. And what I'd like to do just for um, everyone is to have that shown up on the wall and then we're going to walk through sort of, um, the elements of how we see uh, the significant components of this uh, being addressed as part of sort of the public funding pursuits and the opportunities that you have um, in moving forward uh, in cooperation with others. Okay. So uh, as part of this uh, work, we're in phase three of our um, efforts. Um, we have gone through as part of phase one and phase two and sort of evolving these ideas and actually um, going through a number of different scenarios to see what made the most sense and what was most comfortable um, with this as sort of a, a area of focus in the municipality and ultimately how this fits into your overall plan, right? And so um, that brings us to the spring uh, when we were taking a look sort of at uh, really the transformation possibilities um, of necessity as well as of what is desirable. And so um, where we are right now is um, looking at uh, this plan. And I'm going to go um, quickly to straight to the uh, summary element. So for a matter of reference, on the right side of the uh, drawing here on the wall, um, this is uh, McLaughlin Run Road uh, here, and then uh, Bower Hill coming down uh, at the top corner and on the right side, and then um, Bower Hill and the municipal building uh, over in this area, and then um, heading towards uh, the uh, east. And what this drawing is doing is presenting right, a realignment of the Bower Hill corridor within the birth. And what that does is it gives us the opportunity to work with the area of the stream corridor in a completely different way than what uh, we have that exists currently. As part of phase one, you all are familiar with all of the inventory that we did associated with the parcel information in the buildings. Um, and that being drawn down uh, really from a combination of your borough uh, files, uh, the GIS that the engineer has been working with as well and over the years, as well as uh, county uh, data. That's the information that we have available at that point in time. And we considered uh, essentially, as we looked through that, what the possibility was for really, I'm gonna say, making the most of this portion of the community and actually having the opportunity for greater economic development, as well as uh, the root of this is um, having a safe place for people to have business and to live. So from a perspective of where this um, realignment is shown, we, and the corridor is realigned, uh, we then have broken this into phases, and that's where we are right now. So from that perspective, um, uh, if there are any questions uh, where you know, sort of more detailed explanation as to um, things you'd like to talk about, we can do that now before we move into some of these other areas. If you're okay to move on. Okay? So move on. All right. All right. All right. So from a perspective of uh, areas where there are funding opportunities, um, we see that there are really six kinds of areas. And this is on... Um, for the packet uh, is on page three. And so um, I will get into, is everyone okay with this um, clarity? Or do you need to move? Okay. There are six components. 
They range from infrastructure, the streetscape, economic development, the acid and mine drainage uh, remediation, green infrastructure, and stream restoration. And again, these were all looking at how do these kinds of improvements or enhancements um, better the community as a whole. And so uh, as we dive into each of these, we're thinking about how um, there are the possibilities for thinking about infrastructure as the first one. And what we've done is in what you all would have the ability to work with as part of this next set of work is thinking about from an infrastructure standpoint, it's highlighted here in yellow. It's generally the system and the types of things that you would be able to go and uh, match up with. That there are a number of things that are associated with those infrastructure improvements. And we have been able to outline uh, those. We can walk through them. Ultimately, this is going to get us into how the costs break out, right? And the potential for, I think, the number of uh, a number that has been discussed in both our past meetings and of recent is this $30 million sort of frame. And um, we've noted that that doesn't include the acquisition. This is clearly what we're talking about as part of um, any sort of project area enhancements. And so in looking at this, I think um, we've had some very important an exciting discussion about really, again, to that safety standpoint and even efficiency standpoint, what we can do with sort of this road network. There are two main differences from what exists today when we're talking about actually entering this corridor from either side. The one is looking at what the possibilities are for a roundabout here. And again, from an element of uh, what we have today, we have a uh, three-way intersection, three-way stop intersection, and we also have this opportunity to think about how we would realign this road. Remember, as we went through our discussions, we have this um, relationship with the hill that exists there now, and really what is um, the most applicable thing to do with sort of how that road is or is not related to that hillside and how the stream is or is not related to that hillside. So by having this turnaround, we're actually in part pulling that um, intersection away from the hillside and allowing more room for the stream to course through. This also then is coming across, going to the west, and then introducing an alignment here. The engineer has identified, um, Joe has identified that maybe there's a possibility of also having some site, sort of um, different configuration to that intersection so that traffic going through it, uh, straight through as compared to those that are turning, would also be able to, again, have some efficiency without having the price tag, the same price tag as that may be associated with the turnaround on the eastern side. Um, this is a bigger investment than having an improved intersection over here, maybe with what, um, what people in the trade call the pork chop or have, you know, some sort of directed lanes there. So um, we also then are looking at sort of what the possibilities are then for realigning the utilities within the right of way, how this relates to sort of drainage within the uh, stream corridor, and even getting into um, is this a component really of the borough's complete streets effort? Is it having multiple modes of um, tramp, multiple modes of um, the way people move, right? Meaning it's anticipated that there are sidewalks in this area to what they're connecting is going to be important as we um, look at the ends, uh, as well as just safety within the corridor. Is there an element of a bus stop um, that's part of this corridor? Is there um, also any sort of um, bike lane in terms of the right of way, at least allocating some right of way, where in the short term that may not be something that's designated because you need an ultimate you know, connection to that, but having the ability to have that um, at least designated um, the space for it so when it's time to connect into something, there is you know, the width there to do such a thing. So we want to plan, this is really, I mean, this is looking out decades. That's the notion of what we're doing here. And we're trying to be forward thinking. 
So while some of this may seem very lofty or looking at an umbrella that is incredibly large um, in its scale, that's what we need to do. And that's what we're tasked with thinking about. So as it relates to infrastructure, um, the components of even the bridge rehabilitation or those improvements are something where I think you guys have been pursuing those discussions over the last few weeks and that are going to be folded, the opportunities for folding that into uh, this effort. Any questions related to sort of that component of infrastructure? Only comment, Carolyn. I think we started to get traction in the planning commission meetings a couple ago, and then somebody from the community raised the same point of just an interest in perhaps doing some parking on the north side there too, so it's not pure green space. Semi permeable, just uh, if, if people truly use that as a parklet for a destination, thinking about some parking on that side, I don't know that it would radically change what we have here from the purposes of coming up with a rough order of magnitude estimate, but that's been talked about a number of times and like reflected on the, what we're putting out there as a working draft. I think it does. And I think when we even get into the green infrastructure piece, and when we think about the surfaces, that we're going to be able to, right, to take that yeah. idea. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. OK. I'm going to move on to the next one. All right, streetscape. This is slightly different in that um, there are some funding opportunities that uh, specifically look at sort of what the character of a street is what is happening within that right of way. In some cases, again, depending upon the pursuit uh, or the line of thinking, um, how this folds into infrastructure, of course, is sort of hand in hand, um, how this folds in with green infrastructure. You're going to see that there are opportunities in what we're doing as part of this package is ultimately identifying where there are relationships so that you can go after different sources or have different discussions with partners um, about sort of the integration of what they're trying to resolve here, right? I mean, they're trying to um, change and uh, have that evolution. So from a perspective of the streetscape, we've highlighted this area because what this does is it starts to truly integrate sort of the public right of way and its potential connection with what may be in part of the private sector. And where you have driveway entrances, where you start to get at um, some of this parcel access, again, Components of safety is what we were uh, having as this underlying piece, and um, that's number one, as you've just uh, signified uh, when we're completely agreeing with. Um, as that is uh, that motivation in improving the safety, we want to ensure that any sort of access, whether it's uh, pedestrian access within this streetscape, whether it is vehicular access within this streetscape, that those points make sense that there is proper sort of say, um, notification of those, and that it feels like it's a place where people want to be, right? Because what we're doing, right, is we have, um, these two pieces are really focusing uh, largely on sort of the southern side of our, of the corridor, um, north being up on the page and south being to the bottom of the, of the page. And so we're gonna get into the, the northern pieces where I think a lot of, maybe some of, um, the uh, discussion has been among the public here shortly. But what this we wanted to do in sort of rounding out this infrastructure and street, streetscape piece is to recognize that there are choices. There are choices that uh, can be made and will be made that where it's important, maybe depending upon actually what even the borough's construction standard is for some of the things happening here. If that drawing that construction sort of sort of specification or detail, even as to how um, roads or walkways or uh, driveways are constructed, because we're ultimately um, trying to improve sort of that permeability, where we are not going to be able to resolve every uh, a, a flood of every magnitude, but we are going to be able to improve what is happening. Um, and the timeliness of that in um, most of, of the events that are in front of us. Those uh, other improvements that I'm referring to, I think, go to even some of the recent discussions that you all have had at the sort of larger regional scale. This is part of the puzzle piece to the whole puzzle, and we recognize that and understand its importance. So 
uh, from a perspective of um, where you were just talking about where um, we have the opportunity to sort of improve um, sort of those techniques and actually what the expectation is for how um, the quality of development that is here and that includes, includes what's on the ground as well as sort of looking at where there are opportunities for even improved building performance. Okay? <clears throat> All right, again, um, looking sort of at uh, economic uh, development, we have a, a very interesting thing I think that has been uh, re reflecting upon what you all have thought about in the last year or so as related to your ordinances. And that was the notion of where there is opportunity and where it is applicable and where it is quite frankly necessary because of say the flood plain designation line we're thinking about um, in this area that is first floor parking. That is one of the things where we, as part of the sort of evolution of those ordinance updates, are recognizing that that as sort of the use of first floor activity is incredibly important, um, and having that sort of uh, being able to accommodate any sort of parking needs um, for any other development that is happening there, again, in the decades moving forward. And so when we think about um, how parking will be able to be accommodated, as well as um, uh, these other pieces for, I think when you were saying parking on street for people that are coming to visit or you know, those, two, those types of things, that is also falling into this. The uh, $30 million number um, that has been referenced in the past, also uh, as we've highlighted in previous discussions and sort of our pursuits, does not include the building development itself, meaning construction of any square footages that may be upon, you know, in the private sector. And so I think we just are recognizing that in pursuing any sort of um, complement to what is happening on your main corridor, um, that we're able to um, highlight that the borough's um, discussions at the table with any sort of um, private uh, sector is going to be something where you're again moving forward to what is best for the borough as a whole and sort of being able to um, transform what is happening in this area. Again, along with this and the, what you've done in your um, past ordinance for your recent ordinance updates is actually increasing the height allowances here because we're thinking about what that relationship again of sort of development square footage within the southern side of this corridor um, uh, equates to, right, is, is part of being able to also have a supportive tax base. So let's move on to um, the sort of pieces where we are looking at solving um, some of the ecological um, issues and the environmental things that I think is at the forefront of a lot of the discussion. And again, safety is sort of what is our, are the root of what we're doing, right? What we're addressing. So this goes to that regional discussion. We have known um, in looking at, as part of this work, in looking at the past um, sets of um, available mapping, um, and that there is the uh, sort of pattern of where the old mine shafts are and where those openings are and things like that. And recognizing that acid mine drainage is one component of actually what's affecting some of the quality of the water. We're not talking about quantity yet, we're talking about quality as part of this piece. So if the uh, borough is looking at uh, those types of improvements, then again, it's sort of a regional discussion and being able to identify how um, some of that remediation um, is applicable. And I think in um, sort of understanding some of the recent discussions and what is happening up the creek from where we are talking about immediately of what's happening in the park, what's happening with some of these other areas, again, folds into this discussion. So, all right, green infrastructure, and stream restoration. I'm going to go to stream restoration and then work backwards, actually, um, to this. So if you want to go to that, it is just on page 11. Oh, in your handout, you can. All right, so from a perspective of, um, again, this root of safety and thinking about 
uh, the importance of this corridor for the community as a whole. Um, we're looking at this in terms of what is the stream's <coughs> capacity. The stream's capacity today, we generally have a uh, cubic um, footage uh, in knowing that. And what we were doing here is thinking about how can we accommodate a greater capacity so that it is not having that same impact, that same extensive impact within the air, the land, right, where we are right now, uh, down the street, all those kinds of things. And so um, from a perspective of that capacity, and this is the hillside uh, that we know of, where the road is currently coming through at the base of that hill, and then actually um, in having really um, our channel be much uh, greater in its capacity, and actually also having the opportunity from a stream restoration standpoint, being able to have that stream corridor actually be a little bit more sinuous, meaning a little wide, a little bit more. We are increasing the length of the stream within the same within the same length that you have now by widening that um, trough, let's say, we can get a little bit more length. So not only do we have more uh, length, we also have more volume. And that was um, really some of the motivation of, uh, as we looked at these different options, and you all are familiar with in uh, one case, uh, or several cases, we actually didn't have this sort of configuration. We were looking at things differently. But ultimately, as we went through this discussion, this type of uh, arrangement was the one that sort of rose to the top of what to pursue. And so from a perspective of um, where we're increasing the capacity for this, and then um, where we have uh, the opportunity to actually slow the sort of release, uh, or the volume releases, depending upon where um, events, rain events occur, or that we can coordinate this with other things going upstream. Um, again, building on some of the discussions that you've had recently as part of uh, your meetings. That's all fine. Again, yeah. it can't unload in the charger's crypt back here. That's where the problem's at. Can't what? It can't unload in the charger's crypt back here. You can have all the capacity you want. If it can't unload, you're going to play. Right, and so developing some sort of control Right, between the two, and that's why I'm saying that this is one piece of the puzzle, right, and what we're able to do, and thinking about the upstream as well as what's downstream, and I think that you've in been a, thinking about that as part of the park in a, uh, in a, element in, as well. And up here in the bridge. That's, that's a big problem. Well, we're talking to the county. Right, so if even as that discussion relates to what the configuration of this intersection is, and either if there is different construction, or if there is different location, or there's different types of things, I think fitting that all, I mean, we're putting layers upon layers of puzzle solving, problem solving, right, in, in these things. Yeah, no small tasks. No small tasks. <laughs> you hit it, you hit the nail on the head. So um, the other piece to this, in terms of, uh, you know, we're just not talking about capacity, is also sort of the naturalization of this stream corridor. And in small rain events or you know, medium rain events, large rain events, being able to use the landscape to help us with some of the way in which this water is either being um, released or uh, controlled is going to be important. All right. So let's go back then to green infrastructure. And so green infrastructure, um, many of you are familiar with this term or as it becomes more and more significant in really how we're designing from, um, as I am both in uh, the planning uh, side of things and in the landscape architecture side of things, I can you know, put those two hats on. Um, this is something that I think uh, fits right in here, we think fits right in. And so green infrastructure is not just uh, my mention of saying let's um, treat this stream corridor specifically a different way. It's also thinking about how is development or how are the surfaces within this area um, going to be able to respond to um, our rain events, right? 
And so um, there is opportunity both within the court, within the stream corridor, as well as anything that has to do with a hard surface on the southern side of um, the, our drawing um, and our project area. So from a perspective of stormwater management, from a perspective of actually just sort of everyday uh, performance, it could even be in sort of you know, how heat on the ground is being absorbed or not absorbed, um, in a certain way, so then again, you have a lot going on here with the, hill, the hillside. So um, we have uh, roof opportunities uh, to absorb some of this. We have ground opportunities to absorb some of this. Um, as a quick snapshot, um, if uh, any of you are familiar with sort of, there's one project that's been done in the last couple of months um, uh, that is actually looking at sort of, again, how does something from a public right-of-way or public street area or any sort of surrounding area get um, the opportunity to um, essentially look at it through a different lens and function differently. This is a um, concept sketch that was developed. Uh, this is adjacent to a road in the city of Pittsburgh, actually in uh, the North Oakland area. We, we did work on this project as part of the team and uh, developed it um, just to give you an idea of what it means in terms of thinking about um, improving the ground plane and absorbing some of this uh, sur the surface water actually is, you know, sort of as quickly as possible. And being able to think about what's coming off the road and the kinds of materials that are used, the grades that are used, the way in which it's moved, the subsurface, to depending on its uh, porosity, and I don't mean to get technical, but at the same time, those are important words. And those are important words from a perspective, of, I think, even of how you as planning commission, how council and the community as a whole is thinking about, there are some important words that are going to be part of our everyday language that we need to, you know, um, develop um, and get uh, incorporated into what we're talking about. So from a perspective of, um, this is uh, just as by reference um, what the pavement of the road is here at the, on the bottom side of this. This is all flowing into a series of uh, channels and depending upon, obviously, um, this can be designed for different scales of water flow. What is uh, shown here for a particular kind of storm was designed. This is constructed. This is constructed. Um, right beside a road uh, corridor. And quite frankly, what's important about it is uh, many fold. One is how it's functioning and improving what's happening on the, on the, in the right of way. Secondly is also how this is contributing to essentially what the identity of this area is and the desirability then of what's happening around it. Meaning all of these types of things are important as part of what's going to happen here in the core. All right. Carolyn, quick question. Yeah. Your, the phasing that you've got this suggested for, is, is it in any kind of priority of bang for buck? Or is it just from a developmental perspective here? Maybe what I'm getting at is for an area that's flooded, what, four times this year, like this stuff seems like an optimized, nice to have. Does it really move the needle on substantially cutting back what they've been dealing with? as much as the creek piece, right? So is, I see some of that as phase two with the green infrastructure. Is that a logical order with your phasing or just help me understand how one through four came together? Yep. So, um, and I can make this bigger here. Let's see if I can make this bigger. Give me a second, because that's where we're headed next. Okay. Thank you for the lead in here. And let me take a moment to get this big. All right, just to do it. So as we started phase one, I mean, I'm gonna say um, focus area one of our work uh, last fall, it was, understand I made mention of the um, development date and the lot date. So phase one was looking really at, uh, let's 
Let's do it this way. Phase one, two, three, and four, as we've been thinking about this spring and summer, are looking at things sort of systematically. And with that logic component of from a big picture piece, how are we going to be able to get this done most efficiently and effectively? What that has as an underlying set of words and all the italic and all the asterisks is that there is work in front of us, in front of all of us, where we are preparing for phase four at the same time that we're pursuing phase one. If that makes sense. So, Meaning that because we have phase one and we call it phase one, it does not mean that we are waiting to work on phase four. And that, I think, if we go through these a little bit here, is going to um, reveal itself in terms of how do we actually need to look at the big pieces, that's the phasing, and then understand all of the detail of each of those, what goes into getting to each of those phases. So I will um, punctuate that while we have something as phase four here, phase four work is happening during phases one, phases two, and phases three. And so um, we also were looking at that from the standpoint of what kinds of funding needs are out there, uh, or applicable, excuse me, and how can those be pursued? And then how can some of those pursuits actually be used as match dollars to get other things? Because um, pursuing something that may be relevant to a, um, well, let's take a look. Okay. All right. So phase one uh, in this uh, set of discussion is really looking right at sort of that acquisition piece. Because in order to make some of the, for, in order for some of these improvements to be realized, there is this, um, true need to get things coordinated so that it can happen and it be aligned in places. Is phase one going to happen all at one point in time? We don't know that and the answer is probably no, but in terms of sort of the priority to think about what are, what's that immediate uh, discussion that this is at the top. This is you know, the top of our discussion. Okay, phase two, to the right page, yes. This is looking at the road corridor. And in doing this road uh, corridor realignment, which would be possible after, I mean, with the uh, different rearrangement of properties or lot consolidations, all those kinds of things or redivisions, however it may be, most logical, we are thinking about, again, sort of what is starting at the ends and then needing to meet in the middle. And the reason that this is one is because people, our, our region, need to continue to move. Okay? The phase three, which I'll get to very quickly, um, will be sort of in tandem with this. But from a perspective of how things can, I think, be pursued or what the opportunities are um, when we're talking about the notion of road realignment or right of way, how we're treating the right of way, there's also that there's also that um, green infrastructure piece. There are multiple things where we were going sort of through what the types of projects were. Those types of projects have multiple relationships with the phases, right? So this was phase two because, again, we as a region need to continue to move. And we need to do that from one community to another. And safety-wise, we need to have people be able to get to where they need to get to, whether it's in the case of emergency or just generally everyday life, right? The way that you all have uh, roads aligned now. Okay. 
what we've called out sort of as phase three is looking at that stream corridor. In most significantly because if the road is then having a realignment, we now have the opportunity to increase the capacity. We can't increase the capacity without the road's realignment. Hence why we were following this one with um, after the okay. Do they go hand in hand? The answer is yes. But being able to understand things or be able to manage these different types of projects that the borough is going to have on its plate and or partners, right? Being able to sort of have some of these distinctions we thought was just reasonable in terms of being able to understand where things are and how it relates to one another. And then phase four is where we are focused on sort of this uh, bottom side, the southern side of uh, our corridor. And this is really getting at sort of the fine tuning of what's happening in the right of way and then what's happening in terms of uh, the potential development. And again, this element of how parking works and is connected in with this, how people who may want to have upper floor space um, would be able to host business and or, you know, uh, residential in this uh, corridor. These uh, components of having the road realignment and having this extreme capacity um, sort of resolving uh, the problems that we have are needed to get So ultimately we need to be going through, we have that um, breakdown of our individual costs uh, coordinating with Joe and Lori how uh, we will be filling these in um, specific to these phases or if I think what you're sort of uh, raising as well is is there even a, a partial break I mean is there a way to even break some of this down further um, we would be identifying where there is a potential relationship also between some one type of project maybe it's focused on the streetscape but if it has a tie potential tie yeah. to the green infrastructure piece then, with all due respect, it's the twofer, right? And so, where that, the, the bank of the book is, the phrase goes, um, is relevant. We would highlight that as part of uh, these pursuits. So, um, that is uh, trying to get us to a point where, I'm going to go back just to the overall uh, plan, what we've evolved. Uh, from the discussions and being able to organize this information again um, so that the borough is going to and its partners are going to be able to have those discussions and get things going in the direction that they are. I can see, you know, we've talked about this for months and that the drawing that you have right there uh, basically increasing the volume cap cap capabilities yes. and capacity of the water coming down the block. I believe in the last meeting, which you did not attend, the mic, did, did you not say something about the bridge uh, at the end there, at Railroad and Bower Hill, being a dam, basically, with all the stuff coming down through? Now, I see under phase two, item six, that the Railroad Street, Union Street bridge is to be rehabilitated. In doing that rehabilitation, are you, is there any long range? start of that rehabilitation to let the water go through and not have the buildup of debris. And I think, yeah, I'm going to say yes from the context of what we understand. The boroughs have the opportunity to have discussions even with the county and prior in the Army Corps, right, prior to any sort of, I'm going to say, if I may, shorter term kind of improvement, let's look at what the long term needs to be and do that and work towards that. So if we're trying to figure that out and think about how much space does that either span needs or you know underneath that span, what kind of design would need to be done in order to accommodate that? How does that affect what is I'm gonna say buildable and what needs to be available, quite frankly, for our capacity. Yep. I mean, yeah. Let it through. Let it through. Right. And so the the notion of uh, with all due respect, the lines that we you know have 
conceptualized on this drawing. If that span needs to be widened so that we have that through here or at the bottom, I mean at the other end, then we're going to be acknowledging that type of solution is the one that needs to, it is imperative that it is pursued. So taking this concept and being able then for that detailed site design, which is actually, I'm going to say, your next step, right? And that's what, I mean, ultimately when we were looking at some of these things last year, getting into that detailed design, there are a um, significant number of sort of, um, we talked about best practices, we talked about those kinds of things, but what is it even from the perspective of the types of construction details that are important for the borough and any sort of development that happens, as well as the ones that are going to, in those discussions with the Army Corps or you know the, the county, what do we need to do? We need to modify this. How are we going to do it? That's this. To get to the end result. To all. get to the end result. This concept and this pursuit is nothing short of transformation for this corridor. That was sort of the charge that we had, I think, as we went through these discussions. And what we have, that's the ball that we have our eyes on. And that, we understand, is a lot. Meaning a lot to absorb, don't need just water. A lot, I mean, a lot to take in, a lot to um, sort of put a commitment to, but from a perspective of where you all have been in the last six, eight weeks, it's a necessity. And I think when we started this in the fall, we did not, we had some recollection, we've had recollection of <coughs> those past events, but this um, has, has truly elevated uh, where we are. And what we would recommend, this is a recommendation um, for your consideration, but uh, really, Having that, um, the way that we're looking at things, the way we're looking at things, really turning them on their heads and thinking about it. Yeah. And you're thinking of the for the recommendation. I'm uh, hearing you say is to move into this funding process uh, for the detailed lot and runs. I think that the uh, the recommendation is that this collective set of phases of work. One to four is important to consider in its entirety. The way to get to the um, desired end is going to take, I think, some logical steps. And the way that we would be able to think about the road being realigned so that we can get the capacity that is more appropriate for this area um, is that first big piece. And in order to do that, that means that the, some of the lands that exist on the northern side of the uh, corridor, proposed corridor, need to be used in a different way to achieve that. And how that comes about is I mean, the, the detail, I mean, that's the nooks and crannies, but that's the fundamental. And that's what you just said is yes. next on the agenda, which is uh, yes. uh, number three, you know, funding package item three. This is your schedule that you gave us back in April. <laughs> yes. Of 17. Yes. You know, over a year and a half yeah. ago. Yeah. We did one, two, right. right. And we have three was approved uh, right. this winter, right. right. And so we're into the de some detailed drawings of, the, uh, uh, of this conceptual. Plan. That's right. Uh, so, it, so what that, it starts with is you're right. You got to realign the to start to do the the northern side. Right, and so those that detail is the the set of information that the borough would be able to have to further the discussions, say about the bridge realignment or bridge capacity, yeah. structural types of things. I mean that is, and that is the collaborative discussion between engineering and planning and you know, sort of resolution. And being able again to ensure that the movement through this corridor can be you know, maintained. Increased. Increased. The movement of people can be maintained and that the water <laughs> movement through this corridor 
can the the capacity for that can be increased. Yes, may I ask a question, please? Sure. Thank you. Um, as I'm looking at the conceptual plan, um, it is negating or has not taken into effect that after it comes out under our problem bridge, um, this crick makes a makes a dog leg right, and I don't see in this conceptual plan how they're going to address that, and they need to change the. Everybody's looking at me like I'm crazy. Okay, can I? Bear with me. As we come into this wall here, what happens is it becomes a wall, a dam. This water comes under here and then immediately makes a dog leg right. So that some of this water just flows this way. Is there any part in this plan that's going to kind of loop that and change how it flows so that we're fixing this, but not the sense. As the water comes through that area, even as that stays open a little bit enough to let that water come through, we're not addressing what happens on the back end. And part of that back end is where the dairy delight is, and um, that needs to be a smoother curve than, a, than that quick right. I mean, it, it literally is a right and turn. Water doesn't flow right and turn when it gets deep. Water, as it starts to move, becomes a beast of its own. So the water will adhere to itself and just go across and then come into the area here, under the municipal building. So I would like that the conceptual plan just kind of extend a little more. So I think that's an important point. And I think where this goes is, in part is what the discussion is that's happening further east within the stream corridor and some of the other properties because again this is a collective solution of what's happening upstream from this and then what we're able to do when sort of controlling for the release of some of the water within this area as well because I think as we talked about that um, last year and sort of what we were doing we we did consider all right this intersection needs to have some sort of um, overall improvement to it mm -hmm. and if at any point in time that is affecting what's happening here I mean that needs to be recognized as part of the design from a standpoint of what were we going to be able to do sort of with that capacity at this point we did not uh, we haven't looked at the detail of that but I think okay. with the the element of trying to resolve what's happening with this bridge we were going to be able to get to that and just a note, the Army Corps right now is modeling um, the back channel, uh, the culvert area, the bridge, and further up in some of the winding areas that are troublesome to us now, as and giving back to us a plan of what they would recommend. Okay. We do. Yeah. So that's in the works already, and that that was done started before the flood okay. um they met with us um back in july and they they've already started that so when we get that back that will also be helpful in our plans to move forward thank you. as far as all the way back from commercial street and all the way oh, coming up yes yeah continue along that topic you, know, you said it and i just missed it when you were talking about lengthening the actual distance but obviously the right to left stays the distance that it is with that again, what was the length of the English? All right, so at this point in time, and if I need to just give me one second, please. Let's see if I can. I guess what I'm asking is we're not, we're not recreating that same problem, right? No, so just follow, I'm, if I can follow my finger okay. for a moment. Yep. The, underneath this, the stream corridor is really going <laughs> along this road which is essentially a parallel to where this steep slope is and then shoots down what we're trying to do within the same length that we have from intersection to intersection yep. is increase the amount of stream that we have the ability 
to work with. And the grading, obviously, that needs to happen in order to get to that to form. So from a perspective of, well, we have this very delicate balance, right, of trying to create something in larger events as well as just sort of our everyday events that's going to be able to have more capacity because we've increased our volume, but we're also increasing the amount of stream corridor that we're able to so get water. That, that was what I was getting to. Doesn't that replicate the problem then of hard angles and you just got to make them more extreme terms? Mm -hmm. I can see there's not that bad. No, right. no. we are not. This, this is reflective of that length that you're saying. Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. Okay. Because right now, it's essentially an L turned on its side. And then down. It goes up and across. I got you. Okay. This, Today. This is already lengthened. So <coughs> That's right. Okay. It's like a snake and, moving on the grass. And whether, with all due, we end up having two or we have three, right. I mean, the way in which, right, those curves work, and working with the hydrologist, working with sort of um, those in stream restoration, yep. and able to create, and also, um, I mean, this is, I, I don't take this lightly, the way that we're able to use landscape or the plants in terms of even habitat kinds of things, to be able to um, work with improving, I'm going back to that sort of even acid mine piece, right? And trying to improve any sort of quality that we can by what we're putting, by what, you know, how the landscape is being used in this. Yep. And um, we, you know, the shortest distance, right, that phrase between two right. points is that straight line, but we need additional length because then when it comes to the solution that's happening up here and the numbers that the Army Corps is working with, like, what can we do to actually, and, and many events, slow that water down so while there may be some coming through we have the ability to even get timing to be better right so um we're aware that this concept we underline that this concept is part of these other discussions that you're having with people and we know that there is so much that can be done within this amount of space. That why we did have this discussion about economic development, all those kinds of things, is as we pursued this sort of um, set of ideas, it was not as if we, we have not put a drawing on the wall that took everything in terms of development out of this corridor and made that stream as large, I mean, that uh, volume as large as we could. There is a balance. There is also that balance foremost from, the, from an everyday standpoint of being able to travel in this portion of the borough, whether it's to work, to the grocery store, all those kinds of things, people needing to be able to move here. And what could we do um, to, to complement all of the things that people are saying this needs to happen here, right? So. Gotcha. <laughs> Uh, I just want to say this project's been going on for most of the year, I guess. Year and originally, it wasn't brought up as a flood control project. And what happened a couple months ago during the Bruce Bill was probably everybody's attention to the flood. Or the boroughs working with the county, the Army Corps, and whatnot, We're working on that bridge and the flood uh, the commercial street conduit. So we have to get those things first, control the major things that would cause that bad flood. One of the main, I could say, air problems or whatever. This is all well and good, but it wasn't meant to control the flooding. Now, the way all these folks are here, because I think most of them are worried about the flooding again. And this, in a short, all of it could have taken care of the flooding. Tomorrow, other government agencies have to get those bridges straightened out, deal with Upper St. Clair, maybe put the uh, retention pond up at um, Pompton Park. This is all well and good, but they just kind of play piano piano with it. You're here. Yeah. You're here. And may I add, it's not just Upper St. Clair that's causing this problem, it's also Bethel Park. Right. Because the water is. 
coming out of areas in Bethel Park, um, the, the water was flowing out of people's backyards as a fountain. And, and us addressing up to St. Clair, we need to take it another row up. We're, we're just going another half a mile on the street because it's their water and a lot of the trees that are coming into us. So somehow this ha discussion has to include um, how we control that water coming out of Bethel that's slamming us. You see what happened here, the planting we just saw now, yeah. we saw that before, it's a long term. Yeah. Council working, like Mr. Clauser would say, council working on now, no, we work on 30 years as well, yeah, I, but yeah, we're working but you know, on now. You're not going to build the same bridge twice, so right. if you're going to exactly. do it now, you better put the bridge in the right place. So you better follow this plan as to where to put his brakes. Don't just you know, yeah, we don't, 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 don't want to do anything now that will conflict with this. Yeah. Since the entire time we've been we even overlooking all of this, which was really April 17, so we've got a year plus. Uh, we're looking at this as a possible 10 to 20 year project. Yeah, right. right. It's not going to help what happened right, right now. Ago, and it's going to continue to happen. Yeah, all those retail buildings won't be out for 20 years, but the road needs to move. Five. <laughs> I mean, if you want to fix the flood, that's what you got to do. You got to widen the creek. That's the solution. That, it, you're not going to tell. Obviously, the player's not going to release that. That's right. that's right. This conceptual plan will increase the volume, the older volume. But again, it's a long range project. Realizing the road may be first detailed, perhaps, as you mentioned. But then there's property acquisition that has to be considered too. Yeah, you got to start that in the next couple of years. Thank you. We got to start that. We cannot let this die. We have to start to get some of the home that they're willing to sell. But we have to try to get money and funding so we can start by some of those homes. They are I'm just saying, if you they're fix that bridge down there, down section, it's got to be fixed. Make sure you build the right bridge right now so we don't have to build a new bridge in 10 years. Make, build a bridge that lasts 50 years. That's what I'm saying. We got to go you want to solve this debris. You want to stay in the slow board? We have much less flooding on the top of the debris. You guys don't agree, I can hear. Put it somewhere on the bar. Just that you didn't engineer it to make it so that it would work. Engineer something, go across that whole park up there, catch the debris, and you still let the water flow, then you eliminate the problem of damaging the bridges. So that would be an immediate solution that would happen much faster than any of us. Are you talking about the trash rack that we're proposing? I don't I don't know what I'm proposing, yeah. but but yeah, we actually I I looked online to see catch stuff yeah. that catches things and, and if you look at the expanse of the park and had it slowed down in engineering, if your elevations were correct, you could have a large area to catch that debris, which would stop the flooding of the bridges for now, even though the water is getting more and more every month, every year. Yeah, we actually um, have met with the conservation district down there, and uh, Joe and I are going in to meet with the DEP on August 23rd regarding just that. So, I think that's the immediate problem. Yes, yeah. yes. We're looking at that. We're looking at uh, the trash park. We're looking at what we can do with McLaughlin Field. Um, we're looking at the bridge. We're looking at the culverts underneath Commercial Street. We're also looking at the end of Commercial um, Street where everything um, bottles up. So all of that is being looked at and addressed. But immediately, we're, we're looking at the uh, application for the, the uh, trash rack and the application for the McLaughlin Field. And, uh, well, if that trash thing was at McLaughlin Field, it would catch everything if you had the whole field to work with. Well, we're, we have to look and see. And why we're going to the DEP is we're taking some drawings down and asking them what they will let us do. It has to be a joint permit with the DEP and the Conservation District. The Conservation District was down and looked at it and said, we would be okay with this, but the DEP has to sign off on it also. So it will be a discussion regarding, here's what we would like to do. Okay, what will you let us do? Okay, if you won't let us do this, 
will you let us do this? Um, because without the permits, we can't do anything. Um, so that's coming August 23rd. And as far as the bridge goes, um, in September, we have a meeting with the, the county. Um, they were scheduled to refurbish the bridge. We asked them to discontinue that and look at mm -hmm. replacement. I've gotten an email that they have uh, canceled the refurbishment, which is a plus for us. Mm -hmm. So we will see what's on the table as far as that goes. The borough knows that they're, they're probably going to have to earmark monies for these projects. But we have to see where the county is as far as that goes also. <laughs> And that includes the culvert and going down the street. So all of that is on the front burn. And so if I can speak to just one more piece of that. Um, from our touching base with the borough in June, and then in the middle of July, sort of on sort of the bookends of what was happening with the storm and all of that, we're setting the stage as part of this plan and I think what you all have done through the last I mean getting into this over the winter 2018 and where we are now is there's clearly to us a commitment that things that are that exist probably need to be or will be looked at under a different lens right I mean that's sort of the the notion of what this plan is <coughs> And so this, as you had that uh, meeting, right, with the county coming out, it was the ability to say, guys, we need to think of this in a different way. We have conceptualized things. So while we're looking at something that is decades out, the notion that what is thought about here is different uh, than what exists, what is happening upstream is being thought about differently so and what's it being thought about downstream is being thought about differently. I mean, this is that impetus that I mean that we have really uh, taken this on. So um, as we continue to evolve this and then continue to identify, all right, when we start to tear apart each of these phases and sort of what is the set of work tasks that are in front of the borough, balanced out with all the other things. I mean that you as a borough need to do in sort of the daily lives. And what kind of partnerships are applicable and work, most worth pursuing so that you can get this done expeditiously, as expeditiously as possible is, you know, is of utmost importance. Okay. Uh, Pat. Go. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And thank you, Carolyn. Uh, this concept and the phases of it work in parallel. Is that what you're saying? They, they work in parallel. And phase one is acquisition of property. And that can be done in parallel with phases two, three, and four. Right. As I said several times ago, people are trapped both financially and underwater in their properties. This is an opportune time to look at properties especially those on the south, on the north of the creek side, and possibly look at acquiring some of them, in parallel with working on the plans for how to move Bower Hill Road. As Darlene pointed out, this, this area, the boundaries of this project, should be expanded to include the dog leg. The entire intersection from Commercial Street Liberty, Railroad, and Bow Union and Bower Hill need to be included in this concept because the road is a big part of that, of this project. The, the dog leg is just the beginning of what Darlene is pointing out. On a much more immediate point is the back channel of Chargers Creek. Lori, if I might ask you, where do we stand on on removing the buildup of settlement in the back channel? Because that's an immediate concern. Right. Uh, what we did was, after the flood, we had the contractors spend probably four or five days back there removing um, a lot of the sediment and debris that was back there. 
Um, as far as now, what we have is we have the Army Corps modeling that back there mm -hmm. because the channel has to be opened up. Um, if you take a look at the area where everything gathers and you take a look down McLaughlin, you can't even see McLaughlin run. It has to be open. So um, that's what we're looking at right now as far as that has been cleaned out, um, but we're looking further downstream and what has to be done downstream to open it up. And Joe's very familiar with that. Yes, Joe's spirit. Joe did it the last time. Right. Joe did it back into after the 2004 flood. Right. And unfortunately, it needs to be obviously. Right. Let me Wait, uh, yes. So, um, yes. Yeah. And we've been taking the drop in every. It comes back to the question of the uh, here at the, at the at the division of the back and the main channel, and whether that weir is functioning as it was intended to for the flood control project. I mentioned that to Mike from the Army Corps of Engineers at the meeting in Oakdale. I'm hopeful that maybe as part of their as part of their hydraulic study of the back channel. That they might, that the Army Corps of Engineers will address the original functioning of the weir that divides the main and the back channel because there is very little flow in the back channel. Right. Which I think you, Laura, you've heard many times, and Joe has said it many times. It's part of the reason why you have sediment building up in the back channel, which causes the yeah. back channel to clog, which right. causes which darkening causes everything to else get is, flooded. Which, which slows right. everything also. So it's not just the bridge, it is also that the, the stopping of the water, the flow of the water, the velocity of the water going through that area slows to a standstill, which then also backs up onto Baldwin and McLaughlin Run. Because as, it come, as that creek comes around that bend, I, I want to call it behind the blue moon, but I guess it's called Shelby's. Um, <laughs> I go back here. Okay. <laughs> okay. As that water comes around there, that is now slowed and stopped, which then, of course, increases the the level of water that we see on the block of run. Then beside Universal, the uh, Painter's Fun Crip will be flowing. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, say that again? The Painter's Fun Crip flowing. Yes, the Painter's Run tributary also comes in. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, if we're working in parallel, and we acquire some of the Crickside properties. As Pima, FEMA, and the Army Corps of Engineers said, the best way to flood proof a property is to convert it into conservation. Move the property. Move the property. Move the property. You know, as they were talking about flood proofing, they got a, a resounding you know, buy-in to having properties acquired. People may have questions of valuation, but they are not holding on to their property out of love. They're trapped there financially. If we can, over time, in parallel with developing the plan, acquire property on a voluntary basis with FEMA in this section, we begin the process, and most importantly, even if it goes no further, even if this never happens, we've solved the problem for the people that we acquire property from. They are no longer ever, ever going to get flooded again because they're not going to be there. Because they're not going to be living in a flood zone, and they're not going to sell to somebody who is then going to become a new resident living in a flood zone. And as a community, as a community, we've then solved the flooding problem on the south side of Baldwin Street. North, next, side. North, north side. North side, sorry. <laughs> north side of Baldwin Street. Because there is north side. I know. Because <laughs> there is north side. North side of Baldwin okay. Street. The Greek north side. Yeah, yes. Um, the next question. Wait, Matt, I'm, I was making to your dad. Now tell me how the Bridgeville residents are going to pay for all of that. Now they have benefit. Well, well, let me, let me, can I say no, that? Please. It is not Bridgeville that's going to pay for it. Yes, it is. No, it is not. There are grant monies available through Pima and FEMA to relocate residents and pay value on their property. And the valuation on their property is not after the flood, but before they got stuck. 
So people who have had homes who bought them at sixty, seventy thousand dollars, and those houses aren't worth fifteen. I'm just trying to figure it out. Just don't bear me out. That the government would then do that because it's it's more cost effective to provide safety for these citizens than it is to pay for the rescue teams that came in here and rescued 66 people. That's where the cost analysis is going to come into play for them. Did that explain that a little better for people? And especially FEMA. I mean, they they have how many they of you guys have that. people here? But the, the only way, the only way you can acquire grant money, it's five, it's five, it's the only, the only way you can acquire grant money is to come up with a come conceptual, up with a conceptual plan. plan. That's what we've been working on. That's, right. that's, exactly that, that's, plan. that's, that's what the purpose that's where of that is. Cost it, it, we out. might not do exactly what's what in that drawing, yeah. but at least when we go to government agencies, we go to the county, that's we are able plan. to have a plan in place. That was the purpose of this, and and all the other stuff you can throw away, but if you don't have a plan, if you don't have a plan, they, they're not going to give you any money. Excuse me, this gentleman had a stand up. Sir. No, go ahead. I'm good. You've had it up twice. Yeah. Um, well, just to reinforce what Bruce was saying, you know, I've, I've done this on smaller scales around the country with land acquisition and conservation to deal with a lot of uh, different um, uh, land use issues. Um, you have to be careful in committing scarce resources in land acquisition until you have the funding for the project lined up so that you know you know that whether you call phases or components or however I, I would recommend you not refer to it phases because you told us tonight that it's not temporal it's more uh, action Mm -hmm. uh, so, so like it's like a building. You're putting pieces together and components or elements, and that way people won't get confused with time and time elements. And yeah, and the other uh, and sort of correlated to that is that uh, when you refer to capacity, there were several times here I didn't know whether you were talking about street capacity, uh, transportation capacity, development capacity. Some combination of those two, or some other. There's like five different things you're talking about in managing for capacity, growth, etc. Um, but the, the reason I raised my hand about ten minutes ago to start with is to suggest in preparing for the meeting with DEP, um, and I've dealt with them a lot. And and um, right now they're very understaffed. They're like the smallest they've been in thirty years. And I'm imagining you're talking about the Southwest region folks mm -hmm. primarily right now. Um, in any of in any of it, dealing with them, in particular in regards to what you mentioned, these particular items you're going to talk about, starting basically in the Park mm -hmm. all the way through. I recommend and urge that as a matter of strategy, don't go there saying, "What will you let us do?" It's going to be very restricted because they don't have. First of all, they have no, they have an understanding of what went on here. They saw the TV and they have empathy, but their motivation is totally different and they're limited in their way they even look at things. So it tends to be restricted from the outset. And then they worry about their work. See how much work do they have to do helping us? Mm -hmm. And so they all always want to like find this like middle ground. It's better, I, I would recommend that the uh, bridge will go in with, this is what we want to do, like bigger, like because you know, you've already been advised. You've had several meetings before, and other you know, consultants and people that you, know, you saw for yourself. What basically these pressure points are, and these issues, list of issues that need to be remedied. Right. And well, we're going in just for the area down at McLaughlin Park right now. That's all we're going in for. Is yeah. that is that? Right. That's what I figured. Down? That's what I thought. So that's it. When you. When you talk to them about it, tell them what you want to do. And then they're going to tell you, well, we, we can't let you do that. But make them give you their rationale. Mm -hmm. And they may have to go back to the office and write it up. Mm -hmm. Encourage that they do that. And then they spit it back to you. Then we can creatively respond to create a solution based on how they perceive the box that things are in. And we can get outside that box and do 
a with more like what you envision we really need to do and also what they would permit they would actually they'll actually give and take they'll work with right. us i think but if you go if, as a matter of strategy if you start out with what we let us do they won't let you do much so well, you tell we're, them not, we're not going to do that but okay. what i'm saying i'm not silly enough to say hey well, no, no, they, do here. no, there's you know a relationship I mean? already, like, they, right. there's work stopped out there. Right, right. Okay. and we're taking in our plan, and this is our plan. Okay. okay, this is what we want to do. Yeah, but so any notes that you The work stopped out there is because of St. Clair. Right. So you got to talk to those guys and ask them. Well, that, that, that's what kind of I'm getting at is next, is the only way to cope with the need problem is more, a more comprehensive collaborative fashion. I know that's been a, a full of a lot of, of tension, uh, especially in the past two months, and that's understandable. And in, in fact, the park has to be included. And you know, there's got to be a new way of dealing with that and to bring in some professionals to help with that at the starting even at you know with Senator Casey on down. Right. Well, as far as that goes, we are going to be meeting with Bethel Park. Upper St. Clair and the Borough of Bridgeville um, collectively to talk about the whole watershed. This is just a portion of one of the things that we wanted to do in the short term that we felt would help us. And as far as the plan goes, um, the, the plan for the trash rack actually came from the Conservation District. There's one in Millville right now. So we feel that they will probably permit that. What we also want to do is we want to do something with the ball field, and Joe is coming up with a plan as far as that goes. Um, what we're prepared for is if they say definitely not, then we want to have an alternative plan as far as what else we can do. Make them say, explain why not. Right, well, That's we will. I mean, we're, we're not. Because, because we've, we've dealt with the deep. Right. Yeah, we're not. We're no, not I, I didn't imply that. Yeah. <laughs> But you know this. This is a very complex problem, and it's going to require a real creative solution on a you know accelerated schedule because of the stress. Okay. Well, as we go forth tonight regarding Caroline's presentation, one last question before I sit down. <laughs> if you mind, hydraulics, the hydraulics engineer Gloria. I understand what you were saying about the Army Corps, and it's my understanding that that study is due by December, but this area from roughly here through the dog leg needs some hydraulic analysis. Are, are we ready for that kind of analysis? Or do we, you know, to, to, to look at volume, cubic feet, cubic yards, volume of water, that kind of thing, do we have, or are we, are we ready for something to take a look at that? Maybe? I think from Part both. Phase. I think, and so we'll just call the components based on yes, for the yeah. The the element of the stream restoration piece mm -hmm. is where that is going to come. I think into uh, it's that information will come into play to the specific designing of that stream restoration. So, from a perspective of the work that they're that's being, the borough is. Um, working with the core now and all that. I think that information is going to help us think about the uh, ends. I think when that is done, I think the same sort of rationale or same sort of, of what is the um, result mm -hmm. of this would be able to be pursued. I think let's finish those two efforts and then apply that information so that we Which can the upstream and downstream calculations. To, to know what's coming Correct. In here. Correct. Okay, we need, yes. we need to have that number. Yes. Then we take hydraulic analysis within here? Yes. Okay. Because then we're also going to know from what they're doing now as mm -hmm. to what sort of plan could be applicable either in the immediate term or based on what we can do within, within this study area, how that can apply and change what is also happening down the street. Because okay. I'd like to see some hydraulic analysis as we do this in the next couple, of, I'm hoping the next couple of months, 
Well, I think from a perspective of what we're doing, um, what's on our plate to do with Joe in mm -hmm. breaking out sort of how um, some of the design and engineering pieces go to mm -hmm. each of these uh, components that is something we're working on. We're working is trying to do. Yes. Excellent. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, so that's next on the agenda. This is detailed Correct. item from you. Do you have a time frame and thought process? Yes. So we have your regular meeting is the last Monday of August. We would also then, we're anticipating that we have an update package for you at that meeting. Um, as that, in July, as of mid-July, that's the meeting that we were scheduled to be at. We would um, come here um, based upon, I think, some of the uh, discussion otherwise. Um, and we're still having that meeting on our schedule as it was originally planned um, to actually be doing uh, that presentation then. Um, and then we would have one in uh, prior to your meeting, your regularly scheduled meeting in September. So um, we're going to work with the borough to find a date uh, that would work. So that essentially come um, in terms of some of the things that are happening with the uh, council um, budget discussions and what have you for 2019, we will be able to have an understanding of potential projects and things of where you may be able to pursue different dollars or have different ideas um, for setting aside, you know, even match monies for some of the immediate kinds of things. So next, the last Monday of August, and then um, the meeting within September, what? prior to your regularly scheduled September. So it'll be discussed at the August, or determined at the August. Correct. What specifically will be updated in that next packet? We're breaking out these costs into the components and then identifying where there are the different funding sources associated with each of these components and then where there is also the opportunity to have sort of match matches up between the example I gave, if there's a streetscape pursuit, how does that relate to green infrastructure? So that you can optimize the dollars that you're pursuing. So have, it's the, wait, one yeah, more. Okay. in working with Joe, it's also outlined some of the design and engineering pieces that are relevant to each of these components because that feeds into the detail of what we have tasked to do as part of phase three, but then also what is relevant to um, the work of the next phase in terms of how does that fit in with the time frame of what you're doing with the bridge um, meeting coordination, which is what become, frankly, what needs to shift to be a higher priority or more immediate priority over the course of this fall. Is that level of detail an open question to anybody? Is, is that detail needed to continue to pursue a conversation with FEMA? So you mentioned they got to have a plan. At what point is this plan baked enough that we can pursue that? We're anticipating that by the September meeting. That, that this is going to the, here is the conceptual plan. Okay. We are, as a borough, smart enough to understand how one decision will affect another decision, or could it affect another decision, and then also, what work within this project area is relevant to things happening upstream and downstream? Okay. So if something is being pursued as an act, I'm going to say, even a design and engineering effort upstream or downstream from a efficiency of a result, is that also something that can be pursued here? Sure. You know, so I mean, the, systematically, we're not revisiting, systematically, we're not thinking out of order now that we have sort of this ball rolling and you guys are putting forth that this is the kind of thinking that we have moved toward and where it's applicable in these other areas, we understand that may be necessary. Yeah, so that's, um, this I see is sort of the, the introduction to that whole entire um, so it sounds like the next two meetings are going to be interesting. They will yes. be. Yes. And then we'll wrap this up. To go on to the okay. detail. Okay. May I ask one more thing? Okay. 
Um, but it, this is not as part of the conceptual plan, but part of an immediate, uh, what we might be able to do immediately, although I don't know if it's sitting on your plate. Um, having someone identify within the creek walls what trees might be potentially ready to come down. God forbid we don't have one next month. That that we could start looking at what trees are have been made unstable, so that for the next amount of water they don't come down as part of addressing the gate. And that's the first part. And then if we do have somebody who can do that, um, finding someone to start to cut them down, being able to go um, and reach out to the landowners, homeowners. To say, can we cut this off of your property? Because I realize there's that sticky wicket of what you can do and what you can't do. Right. But we actually have a con have, have had a contractor back in Mahawkland run for the last couple of weeks cleaning yes, out up there. Them. And what they have done is trees that were suspicious as far yes. as looking like they were going to yeah, fall down. You know, them they they <laughs> took them out. Okay. They also Thanks. did that um, down in what down Baldwin Street, we okay. took a lot of trees out that were hanging, okay. that were, um, we felt that may come down soon. We've already done that. Okay. We still need to do it um, down commercial um, to the end of the back channel. Okay. But, well, we, thank you. but we're working on that. I, I did see them in the channel, yes. back area, doing something, but you know, it's not okay. really down my uh, Thank you. Uh, I don't want to keep Caroline here any longer, because we haven't got yet. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, motion to adjourn. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, guys. Really.